Hello everybody and welcome to the big one. The freaking massive one. The cool one. Because today we're answering the big question, which Alder Lake CPU should you go for? We've got the Core i9, the Core i7 in a very PC-centric flavoured box, and then perhaps the most interesting of all, our cheapest chip, the i5-12600K. This video is all about gaming performance, so we're going to be testing just that and some of the latest titles at 1080p, 1440p and of course 4K. So if you're after an Alder Lake system, you know exactly which one is going to be right for you. So let's answer that question and see if we can save you some money right after a short word from this video's sponsor, The Irony. Signal RGB is the quick and easy way to synchronize all of your RGB devices together. Use one application to combine different branded PC components, peripherals, and even Philips Hue, all into a single cohesive color scheme. Different brands, different themes, one free app. You can even sync your RGB with the games themselves, the ultimate immersive experience. Get started with Signal RGB today with that link down below. Let's waste absolutely no time and jump straight into it. Here we have our Alder Lake system that we built last week. It is slightly different as I've swapped out the 3080 Ti for a 3080 because let's be honest, if you've got deep enough pockets for a 3080 Ti, then the i9 can probably fit in there as well. Can you actually fit a graphics card in your pocket? No. We're going to start our testing at the higher end with the 12900K. This is realistically going to cost you anywhere between 500 and 600 pounds, depending on where you get it from and when you're buying it. The main thing that you do need to be aware though is that we are using DDR5 memory here, which is going to get quite expensive and cheaper. DDR4 boards are available, but the performance won't be quite so good. At least in theory. Don't worry, that's something we'll be testing very shortly. So get yourself subscribed if you're not already so you don't miss it. Let's begin our test with the game that is hot off the presses, some Forza Horizon 5. This is running at the extreme preset at 4K, but of course we are going to test a whole bunch of different resolutions. And at the moment we're getting anywhere between 75 and 100 FPS, depending on when and where we are in the game. But of course we want to be as scientific as possible, which is why we've got my trusty notepad, good old pen and paper. And we are of course going to run this in benchmark mode, so we do get the most accurate data possible. But that does mean I'm going to have to watch this benchmark nine times today. But the time for moaning is over because we do actually have our first result, 77 frames per second. Now Forza doesn't look to be a game that is going to be particularly CPU bound because we are able to render 134, but of course as we lower down that resolution and our GPU frame rate increases, we might actually get to the point where 134 is the limit all because of the CPU. Only time will tell. Let's pass some time with a royalty-free wrap that I've come up with myself. The camera's just died battery. Actually, no, the camera's fine, it's just the screen. Joke's on you, though. I've got a spare battery. Next up, we have Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. This is an absolutely fantastic-looking game. There is so much detail here. And the fact that you can actually get over 100 FPS at 4K is pretty impressive. But, of course, we are using an RTX 3080 here. If you're going for something that's not quite as powerful as this, then you'll probably find that the CPU choice isn't quite as important but obviously you do want your system to last for years to come, so getting the right chip is going to be absolutely crucial. Whoa! 1080p? 300 FPS! This is exactly the sort of jump I expected with Forza, and probably not with Mountain Blade, so it's interesting how it's reversed. It really goes to show that what chip you buy should also be based on what you want to do with it, and ultimately what games you play. Don't worry, we will be testing Warzone, because that is a game that is not only very memory intensive, but one that is very CPU bound. But first I want to test a game I've been playing a lot of, and is also pretty intensive, some Far Cry 6. Warm up PSO cache, what does that even mean? Hey Siri, what does PSO cache mean? Pakistan State Oil. Let's have a look then. At 4K, we returned an average of 85 frames per second. An ultra settings 4K, that's not bad. Let's try some 1440p though, baby. While y'all waiting, shall I try my American accent? I wanna go to the drive through today. And before some of you get upset, remember I know all about the, all right, governor, how's it going? Do you want some tea? Tea is actually a pretty good subject because I just ran out of Sainsbury's not so great gold. But let's move on to the big guns with some Call of Duty Warzone. 50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a war zone. 
I mean, you can see that this is still CPU bound. This is now running at 1080p, and you'll see that our GPU utilization is around about 70 to 85%. So there definitely is a lot more to give, but of course, if you are buying an RTX 3080, chances are you're looking at a 1440p screen and above. I'm um, in the Gulag. This is the old school one. Oh no, 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 it's all over. That is the i9 complete. That means we can now move on to a slightly cheaper processor, our 12700K. PC centric edition. I mean, it is just a normal CPU. They just don't have a fancy box. Loading, please wait, you're, except you're not doing anything. Absolute lies. 115 FPS, and that is actually the same as what we saw with the i9. So in terms of any improvements, well, we're not getting any. We're once again back in Warzone at 1080p, and in terms of utilization, it's pretty similar, to be honest with you. Still around about 75 to 80%. I'm not saying that there isn't gonna be a difference in frame rate, but in terms of the way that the game feels, it's pretty much identical, to be honest. That's all of those i7 benchmarks done. It's now time to do it one final time with our Core i5. They're here! Ladies and gentlemen, the results are in, and I promised they'd be fascinating, and indeed they are. Allow me to introduce the person that has moved with me into this new home, Bench Marcus. And my girlfriend came too, but she's not important. Oh, dangerous joke, that one. I'm sorry, I don't mean it. Brilliant intro there, mate. I think you're gonna be very much a single marker soon if you keep going like that. But let's look at the results for a second because as we'd expect, at 4K, there's not really that much difference between them. There are a few subtle changes, but not really anything that I would say is more than margin of error. But when we look at 1440p, things do start to differentiate a little bit, in particular Call of Duty Warzone. But I think the key thing to bear in mind is that there's really not that much difference even when there are differences. And the difference in price is actually huge. And yes, obviously, a higher core count CPU is going to be more useful for just gaming, but if you are buying a gaming PC just for gaming at 1440p, I wouldn't really say any more than the i5 is going to make sense, and even if you did need a little bit more grunt, then clearly the i7 is going to represent better value for money. Will things change at 1080p? Well, no, not really. It just sort of amplifies the slight changes a little bit more. Again, Call of Duty Warzone, this is a game that is very CPU dependent. And clearly, if you have even faster RAM and you have an even faster CPU, you are going to have an advantage. But even then, it still depends on the resolution that you're playing and settings and things like that. And at the end of the day, is 20 FPS difference really going to be worth all of that extra money? Yes, you are going to have a high degree of longevity. And by the time the games arrive for actually require this level of horsepower, well, there'd be even more powerful CPUs out there, and you could get these current ones for less money. But again, it all depends on what you want to use your PC for, and what games you're going to be playing. So there you are then, a real-world comparison of Alder Lake and some of the latest titles. Obviously, it is going to vary depending on what you're playing, but ultimately, do remember this is an RTX 3080. If you're not using this, if you're using something that is less powerful, then the CPU matters even less. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comment section below which of these CPUs would you go for and of course as always if you do want to check out current pricing on anything that was featured in this video you can find that linked down below smash that like button get yourself subscribed and I'll catch you in the next one